Guam seems to ignore the giant signs of awakening, over at the Philippine National Red Cross headquarters, a meeting is being held in anticipation of any disaster that may come as a result of the giant's awakening. Here is an agency that's taking nothing for granted. Since the beginning of time, the volcano has always been considered a sleeping giant whose awakening brings with it fury and destruction far beyond the imagination. For years, this giant has been asleep and thousands of people have been living peacefully at its feet. of the disaster report on September 28th, the Philippine National Red Cross, in accordance with its mandated duties for relief work in case of natural disasters, immediately set off its relief machinery into operation. Nine medical and relief teams, composed of 41 men, pulled out of the national headquarters and rushed to the affected areas. They brought with them medical supplies and food for emergency mass feeding. These teams were subsequently augmented to better cope with the expected needs of the swelling tide of evacuees that continued to flee from the fiery wrath of the spewer. The relief was personally supervised by acting chairman Dr. Euphronio M. Alip and coordinated by Dr. Telesforo Calazans, Secretary General of the Red Cross, and Mr. Faustino Mercado, DPRS Director. in Batangas, its administrator, Ms. Teodorica Robina, right after the eruption, had gathered her volunteers and started the relief. The entire nation responded to the call for help. Thousands sent in their donations in kind and in check. From the president's office, 200,000 pesos. From the American Red Cross, 10,000 pesos. From the Central Bank, 10,000 pesos. From the Philippine Packing Corporation, 50,000 pesos. Some 50,000 or more persons were affected by this tragedy and the task of rehabilitation requires careful planning. Senator Katigbak, Mr. Antonio de las Alas, Mrs. Foster, Dr. Ali, General Tenza, Manuel Lim, are here engaged in a huddle over plans for effective relief and rehabilitation of the evacuees. Initial evacuation centers were set up by the Red Cross to help the evacuees in Taal, Santa Teresita, Balayan, Calaca, Mabini, and Batangas. Mobile units like this one help those in transit. In Batangas, the Lipa City Red Cross chapter took charge of distributing whatever relief came from the PNRC headquarters in Manila. Besides the essential foodstuffs came other household items like water jugs, mosquito nets, pillows, mats, cooking pots, pieces of spoons and forks, cups and plates. More lake towns considered within the periphery of the danger zone were forcibly evacuated. The evacuees were housed in either public or private edifices such as the Batangas Market and school buildings and a parish convent. The place did not matter. What concerned the Red Cross was for the evacuees to have shelter during this emergency period. 
The first day was a heartbreaking sight as families sought each other and others sobbed out their losses in lives and homes. In the midst of all these, Red Cross workers went on their assigned tasks in the manner of experienced relief workers. They participated in the rescue and recovery operations. Meantime, donations continued to pour in from civic-minded citizens. Various organizations sent in their share in cash and in kind. These the Red Cross received and efficiently distributed. Other Red Cross officials went on an ocular inspection of the extent of the destruction caused by the volcanic eruption. What they saw could chill the blood of the bravest man. Everywhere, they were greeted by the sight of devastation. Barrios that were once prosperous were now a complete desolate rubbish of no man's land, entirely covered by ashes. is tarnet-like in shape and black as carbon. It is surrounded by sulfuric hot water whose vapor fills the air with a foul odor. Heat emanates from the water and meeting the cold air forms a kind of mist which spreads all over the abandoned area. A kind of a hill was formed by the tremendous landslide of molten rock and lava. of water was once a fertile rice field, a source of life, now it is a sea of death, a burial place for the thousands who have perished there. Even now, you seem to hear the cries of anguish, the moans of pain emanating from the charred lips of its unfortunate population as they flee from the oncoming destruction, calling out hysterically for the loved ones. It is here that we find the buried barrios of Subic and Alasas, the seat of devastation. This upper hillside was once the volcanologist's building site. The building, which used to house the volcanologists, had been completely buried in ashes, several meters thick. On the site itself, we find Mr. Mercado, PNRC Director of Disaster Preparedness and relief services. Receiving a briefing from the Volcanologist Commission while workers busily dig to uncover the buried building. Manas Relocation Center for the Displaced Tal Victims. It has been established as a definite pattern for all existing and projected relocation centers in view of its success and effective programming. This center was put up October 11th by the Presidential Committee on Relief and Rehabilitation for 58 families. Aside from this, two other relocation centers have been put up, one in Tal for 110 families the other in Barrio Himalas, Balayan, for 60 families. Altogether, some 228 families, composed of 1,368 persons, are under the care of the Red Cross in these relocation centers. The task of relocating displaced families is a gigantic task and demands all the skill and training of Red Cross personnel. Army personnel lend a helping hand, too, to the task of the Red Cross. They have assumed the responsibility of attending to the health and welfare needs of the resettled families until such time that they can stand 
on their own two feet. Each member of the family is given an identification badge to separate them from others who take advantage of the plight of the victims and snatch the benefits due to them. rehabilitation for the evacuees, the PNRC has made several recommendations to the Presidential Committee on Relief and Rehabilitation to create a placement group for the evacuee families to create a group to make a study of the different skills of evacuees and to encourage and assist evacuees make direct contacts with prospective employers. When the government moved to resettle the displaced families in the relocation centers, the Red Cross pledged to provide each family with general household items, including the usual relief supplies of rice, canned goods, and clothing. The first shipment of household items to Balayan Relocation Center took place on October 10th. The success of Red Cross relief operations in behalf of the Ta'al victims could be easily traced to the spontaneous support and cooperation extended by kind-hearted individuals, firms, and organizations to the Red Cross. Medical teams were stationed in the centers on a round-the-clock schedule to help government units to safeguard the health of the evacuees. Home service workers were also on hand to assist in the alleviation of the sufferings of the refugees. of rehabilitation just beginning, the Board of Governors and officials of the Philippine National Red Cross meet to discuss further plans to facilitate and expedite earlier rehabilitation of displaced families. of destruction, a sickening feeling in our hearts, we can't help thinking that we have at least done our best to lighten the burden of the victims. At the same time, our heart fills up with gratitude to the thousands of volunteers whose cash assistance and kind donations help us, the Red Cross, in mitigating the unfortunate victims' suffering. As long as we have men of this kind, our nation can never perish. It will rise again to claim its share of greatness. 